a Singaporean went to hospital, he has to cut off his leg because his leg got gangrene due to diabetes. The following morning when he woke up, he saw the surgeon looking at him and the surgeon said, I got good news, but I got bad news. So the patient says, tell me the bad news. We cut off the wrong leg. <laughs> of course, the uh, patient was shocked. After he recovered from the shock, he says, okay, tell me the good news. You are covered under medicine. <laughs> and you can possibly claim under cashew. Okay, so that's the joke. I want to start off. <laughs> Now, so what is Cash Shield? Uh, Cash Shield will be introduced in the year 2020, in two years' time. Now, it is an insurance to provide long-term care. Okay, long-term care. Uh, and what does that mean? Uh, it's to pay, help you to pay for the expenses of staying in a nursing home or to employ a nurse look after you at home. Now this insurance pay only for people with severe disability. Must be very severe. Not just disabled, but severe disability. And how is severe disability defined? Uh, the uh, definition is you must be disabled to an extent that you can't perform at least three activities of daily living. Now what are these activities of daily living? Uh, the insurance scheme defines six activities. Uh, one of them is you can't wash yourself. The other is you can't dress yourself. The third you can't feed yourself. The fourth is you can't go to the toilet by yourself. The fifth is you can't move <coughs> from the bed uh, to a chair called transferring. And the sixth is you can't move from room to room. So these are the six activities. Washing, dressing, feeding, toileting, transferring, moving. Now all this means somebody must be there to help you. So it's either a nurse, a full-time nurse in your home, or for some people they will stay in a nursing home where the nurses there can help you with this activity. Now this is not the same as the insurance to provide loss of income during disability. Now, what is this disability insurance that most people think about? Uh, you are working, and in the, these are mostly self-employed people. Let's say you are a taxi driver, and if you are very sick, uh, you can't work. You can't drive a taxi. And if you can't drive for several months, uh, you need to have insurance to pay disability income. But the long-term care, the care shield, needs to be more se severe than that. Uh, don't say that you can't work. That's covered by a separate insurance, uh, loss of income insurance. So long-term care must be uh, such that you need someone to take care of you. So that's care shield. So somebody complained I think the social media, uh, he uh, was covered under Elder Shield, which is similar to Cash Shield. And then he is uh, totally blind. And he says, I can't work. I want to claim under Elder Shield. And the insurance company says, no, uh, uh, we can't pay your claim because you don't qualify. Uh, although you are blind, you can still dress yourself. You can still feed yourself. You can still go to the toilet by yourself. Uh, so you are not meeting the criteria of three 
unable to perform three activities of daily living. So you must know the difference, therefore, between the loss of income, you can't work for a living, and severe disability that require a nurse to look after you. Now, the, what is uh, Elder Shield? Uh, elder Shield is the same, it's also uh, long-term uh, disability insurance. So Elder Shield is the same as Cash Shield. Elder Shield was introduced, uh, I think about uh, 15 years ago, Elder Shield. Now, how is then Cash Shield different from Elder Shield? Now the coverage is the same. Uh, it's for severe disability, not able to perform three activities of daily, daily living. The coverage is the same, but where's the difference? Elder Shield pay $400 a month. Care Shield will pay $600 a month. So therefore, Care Shield payment increased by 50%. Next difference, Elder Shield pay maximum six years. Care Shield pay for as long as the page, as the claimant leave, can be more than six years. So it's payable for life. Okay, so on the one hand, the benefit goes up 50% uh, and uh, also payable for a longer period. So if you compare Care Shield and Elder Shield, of course Care Shield is better. Uh, but Care Shield require a higher premium. But the premium increase I calculated is only 15%, one five. The benefit goes up 50%, uh, the premium goes up only 15%. So between Care Shield and Elder Shield, which is better? Ah, cash shield is better, okay? Uh, now, the, what about MediShield? Uh, MediShield is to pay for our cost of hospital care, in hospital. So just now I told the story <coughs> of the person who's cut off the wrong leg. Uh, okay, the surgeon will charge him for the surgery and the hospital will charge him for staying in the hospital. Uh, this is covered under MediShield. All right? Whereas, Care Shield is for a nurse to look after you at home or for uh, staying in the nursing home. So therefore, there's a difference. Now, MediShield covers uh, expenses of uh, hospital uh, treatment and also certain types of chronic illnesses treatment for cancer, uh, kidney dialysis, and and a few others. Elder Shield and Care Shield is pre-funded. Pre-funded means you pay your premium up to age 67, and after that you don't pay any more premium for the rest of your life. But you are covered for the rest of your life. So you are paying the premium up to age 67 for coverage for the rest of life. So this is called pre-funding. MediShield is not pre-funded. Uh, MediShield, every year you pay the premium. Uh, and, and even if you are 90 years old, you still have to pay the premium. And the premium becomes more and more expensive as you grow older. Very expensive. So MediShield is not pre-funded. But the government says they are trying to do some partial pre-funding. Partial pre-funding means if you are young, uh, we want you to pay a little bit more, so there's a bit of surplus, so that in the future, your premium when you grow old, not as much as it should be, because there's some partial pre-funding. How it works, uh, I don't know. Uh, but it has some partial pre-funding. Now, the, but definitely, many shield can become very <coughs> expensive. 
Magisteal is also compulsory. Magisteal life, the latest is also compulsory. And the uh, Singaporean living overseas are very angry. Uh, they also have to pay. Although they live in other countries and are uh, being treated in other countries, they also have to pay Medishield life because it's compulsory. So we got a lot of complaints from a Singaporean living overseas. Now, cash shield life, cash shield life. And if every time you see life, you got CPF life, uh, you got Medishield life. Now you got cash shield life. Whenever you see life, it means first. Compulsory. <laughs> All the life are compulsory. And second means it covers you for the whole of life. Okay? Uh, so, uh, cash you life is compulsory. But compulsory only for people who are 40 years and younger in 2020. That means born 1980 and after. 20, everybody less than 40 years old must join. And then after that, those reaching age 30 must join Cash You Life. So 2020, all those 30 to 40 must join. And year by year after that, those who become 30 must join. It's compulsory. Now, why does the government want to make it compulsory for Cash You? and for medical life and cash you life because the government wants the healthy people to subsidize the not healthy people so everybody must join if, if you don't have compulsory uh, then some people say I'm very healthy, I don't join and later on when they become sick then you want to join at that time okay uh, so the uh, government says no, it must be compulsory so that's why we have all this life scheme compulsory, including CPF life. Uh, that's why so many people are unhappy. You can't take out a CPF at 55 because it's locked up under CPF life compulsory. So I want to talk about some flaws, some weaknesses uh, in our insurance system. Uh, one is, why do we need two separate schemes? Medishield life and cash shield life. Why can't you have just one scheme to cover both? <coughs> Alright, so this was what uh, one uh, uh, old man at the bus stop, he says, Oh, you're Mr. Tan. I said, yes. Uh, why does the government want to have two schemes? I say he's old, but actually he's younger than me. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so uh, many people then come and say, I don't understand the difference between these two. Why do you want to have two separate schemes? And then another is, why is cash you pre-funded? That means up to 67, you pay up to 67, but after that you don't pay anymore. But MediShield continue to be payable for as long as you live. So why is one pre-funded and the other not pre-funded? So to the ordinary people, they find this all very confusing. All right, okay. Next question is, why only 600? Is it enough to take care of nursing home fees? And the answer is no, because nursing home fees, I think cost about $2,000, okay? Maybe more. Huh? Yes, okay. more. Of course, uh, Mr. Corbyn once says, go to Johor Bahru. <laughs> okay. uh, but then, uh, although it's more, I think the government does provide some uh, subsidy. Uh, so after subsidy, maybe, maybe it's not more that much. We don't know what is a subsidy. Of course, a government subsidy is very confusing. <laughs> this government, everything very confusing. <laughs> I can tell you, you read the terms and conditions, it's very complicated. That's why I say, I don't like uh, Mr. Lee Sien Lun's 
the way he run the country, <coughs> all his schemes are so complicated. Everything got five page must read. Okay, so uh, even the subsidy is also complicated. Who gets, who don't get, depend on family income, depend on whatever, so many things. Somebody, I think the Minister for Health said, over four years, they collected 2.6 billion in premium, but they pay out 100 million in wow. pay. Hmm. So it's 26 in one. So are you, co are you uh, collecting too much? Of course, the minister says, uh, because there are very few actuaries, so many people are not actuaries. Uh, so he says, oh, this is pre-funding. Uh, when you grow old, you're going to make a claim. Because he knows, not, there are so few actuaries, so most ordinary people don't know. But I'm an actuary. I tell you, the premium too high. Even to allow for reserve for the future is still too high. Okay, that's my, that's my view. Of course, uh, my good friend Mr. Leong C. Yen says, why don't we get the actuary who did the calculation, publish the report, then we will know uh, how many people claim at what age. So far, we don't see those reports. Uh, so I know uh, my gut feel uh, it is too high. The premium is too high. The actuary is too conservative. Uh, he thinks that so many people will claim, but the actual number of claims is much less. So therefore, the premium could be lower. Uh, could be lower. So I think uh, the premium is too high. And uh, there's a big problem about uh, compulsory. I mentioned about why should Singaporeans living overseas, and some of them live overseas for 10, 15 years, <coughs> they're not going to claim what should they have to pay. <coughs> All right? And uh, in Singapore, uh, some people say, my CPF not enough for me to live on. I don't want to, to join this uh, magic shield or cash shield. Uh, why you want to make me pay my Okay, so compulsory do have a problem. What is my preference? If I were the health minister, if I were the prime minister, uh, what would I do? Okay, of course this is easy to talk. I'm not a prime minister, I'm not a health minister. Uh, so I'm going to share with you what I think uh, all this should be. First, we should have only one scheme to cover health insurance. No need to have care shield and no need to have medical shield. We just have one combined to, to cover all the medical needs. All right. Uh, the scheme should be operated on non-profit. So nobody should make profit, not even the government. Okay, the government now, we all suspect they are making a lot of profit, but they're not sharing. So it has to be a non-profit. The third is, the premium every year should be based upon actual claims. Alright, so you don't want to have extra keep for the future, but sometimes we don't know how much you keep for the future. <coughs> so the premium should be based on actual claims. But there's still a problem. As you grow older, the cost goes up very high. Uh, so there must be some pre-funding it means as you are young, you must keep aside the money that can be used for, the, for, for older. But the pre-funding, I prefer individual, my money. So I pre-fund my money, I will use to pay when I, when I get old. But if I uh, uh, don't, uh, don't use up the money, the money still go back to my family. So it's individual pre-funding. Of course, medicine is actually individual pre-funding. And individual pre-funding. But the trouble with MediSafe is it's used for so many other things. can even be used for your family member. So your MediSafe might be all used up. Uh, so the pre-funding that I suggest should be pre-funding only for the insurance scheme. It cannot be used for other things. 
Okay, so this is what I think. But it should be voluntary. You want to join, you join. You want to join, up to you. It should be voluntary. But I, my proposal is there must be 30% subsidy by the government. Whatever is the total claim, the government pay 30%, then 70% charge to everybody. Okay, so if there is a 30% subsidy by the government, I think many people will want to join. Because you're only paying for, sorry, 30% subsidy by the government, you're only paying for 70% of the actual cost. Uh, because the, the, the government thinks it should be 0%. Okay? And then, uh, if you are in a truly socialist country, it should be 100%. Government pay 100%. Huh? So, this is halfway in between. Huh? Uh, of course, uh, if another party says 100%, uh, then you vote for that party. No, no, I'm just being visual to ask you what's your assumptions in your thinking. Uh, no, no, it's just a matter of judgment. Okay. It's a matter of judgment. There's, there's no. There's no magic formula. Okay. Okay. Mm. So I will say it's 30% uh, subsidy by the government. <laughs> uh, it should be voluntary. Uh, I also want to say this. Our medical life, I don't like it. Because the deductible is 1,500. It's too high. And that's why so many people want to buy this uh, rider to cover deductible. For me, the deductible should be maybe 300 or 500, not so high. Right. So if you have a lower deductible, then people don't need to buy all the rider. Right. But this other thing I don't like about MediShield is you get a bill, very complicated. The insurance company says this cover, that not cover, this cover, that not cover. It's very complicated. So I will come and say the total bill must be covered. If you want the patient to pay 10%, 15%, go ahead. But of the total bill, not item by item which is covered, which is not covered. So I don't like my issue right because the it's so complicated. Well, I told the story uh, in my Facebook. So I met one retired and MP. His wife got, uh, uh, got cancer and he told me, uh, wow, the bill is so many items and so costly. Uh, so, and I told him, yeah, that's true. Uh, our, first of all, our hospital bills are too high and they got so many items. And he come and says, the administration cost must be very high. Wow, this one charge, that one charge. Why can't they give you a a total package rather than so many uh, items. Huh? So, uh, so my medical uh, coverage, uh, I would prefer that the total bill is covered and maybe the patient can pay 10 or 15 percent. The deductible may be $500, not too high. Of course, the government will come and say, but what if the hospital charge a lot of money? How do you control that? You know, uh, I won't mention specific hospital, but some private hospitals, the bills are very high. Two to three times of what a normal bill should be. So how do you control that? That's why I say to you, <coughs> the health minister, uh, you're not doing your job. If I go to the health minister, I will approve certain hospital and I will not approve certain hospital. You are approved. These are hospitals are approved. If you want to be approved for Magic Shield, mm. I want you to have a great rate. You cannot anyhow charge and add so many items. There must be a great rate. So one key uh, of uh, one key element is there must be approved hospital who agree to operate on a great rates. These are the rates. 
Okay, uh, I personally share this example. I went to uh, a hospital 10 years ago for colonoscopy. You must check whether my colon got uh, uh, cancer or not. I was told cost a thousand dollars. I said okay. But when I wake up the following day, they never cut off the wrong leg. Huh? <laughs> but they come and say, no, when I wake up after the surgery, because uh, I was asleep during the surgery, uh, the bill was 1006 So I says, hey, I thought you told me 1000 So they say, oh, we found a poly. So the poly cost another $600. I don't know. I, I'm not an expert. You can show me the photograph. I don't know whether that's a, that's a poly or not. <laughs> I'm not an expert. But I think if I were a health minister, I would come and say the cost one thousand, maybe you want to increase to a thousand one, thousand one hundred dollars, should include any poly. You cannot just charge extra. Because if you allow this, then your doctor sometimes they will also charge extra because you don't know, you're not expert. So I will come and say that uh, I believe the proper uh, system is we have a proof hospital and this hospital, their charges, uh, their, the rates must be negotiated and agreed. By the way, this is what happens in Japan. In Japan, every year the Ministry of Health negotiates with all the hospitals and doctors what is your fees for each type of treatment? One bypass, two bypass, three bypass, coloscopy, including polyp and so on, what is your fee? All right, and of course, it's negotiated. Of course, the hospital and doctors, they want to have enough uh, revenue to operate, but the Ministry of Health want to keep the cost low. So it's negotiated. So we don't have to worry you go to hospital, is covered by insurance. The fees are all agreed, but they are adjusted every year. Next year, uh, the hospital says our cost goes up 3%. But oh, okay, the fees can go up 3%. You know, uh, so I think uh, this, that's a better system. So a Singapore system, where you allow the doctors and hospitals to charge what they want, I think it's no good. That's why we all complain as consumers. Why so expensive? and keep on going up by a lot. Okay, of course I'm talking as a non-medical person. Later on we hear from Paul whether he wants to speak from the side of the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> a number of areas in the government uh, which are not operating well. Uh, these, these things have to be controlled. Nobody is controlling. Just let the market run away. Uh, I also have other areas of complaint that's why you read my Facebook, you can see uh, what my thinking are. I also think that our infrastructure is, cost is too high. You know the downtown line I just read? Initial estimate was 10.5 billion. The final bill, 21 billion. I said, what kind of control you have? Of course they say, oh, the cost has gone up, but does it go up? Double. So we got plenty of areas, plenty, plenty of areas uh, where the money is just anyhow spent, like I call it, not properly uh, spent. So I believe that uh, one important strategy, if I were the health minister, I would do this. I will approve which are the hospitals to be covered under MediShield, uh, and then to be approved under Medi MediShield, uh, you must, uh, we will have some negotiation what the rates are. If you don't want to operate under MediShield, it's okay. There are still Indonesians and foreigners who can come to your hospital. Uh, that one you can charge whatever you want. But if you want to operate, to claim under MediShield, this must be the rate. All right, and uh, that will include our government hospitals, our restructured hospitals. Our restructured hospitals, uh, someone pointed out to me, Mr. Tan, have you seen the mm, Ting Fong Hospital in Jurong and the, and the Sengkang Hospital? Uh, I haven't seen that, but I said they are very luxurious. Five-star hotel. 
the lobby area, you know. So I think it's too expensive, right? Eh? So my final closing mark for people on Elder Shield, uh, when Care Shield is introduced, you can move to Care Shield. Do you move or not? I said yes. Because you pay 15% more, you get double the benefit. For people who don't want, who are not in Elder Shield, uh, do you want to buy Care Shield on your own? It's voluntary. Depends on how much money you have. If you not enough money, then I'll go buy. <laughs> okay, but uh, uh, okay. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know uh, whether it's worthwhile or not. Okay, because I, I don't know what is the claim rate. I suspect the claim rate is very low. And I suspect the premium is too high. That means don't buy. <laughs> <laughs> but since I already bought, in my case, I already bought Elder Shield, uh, might as well pay 15% more to get 50% more than it did. But if you are already stuck in Elder Shield, you might as well move to Cash Shield. If you haven't joined, then uh, uh, maybe uh, donate. Okay. They are over 67 years old and everything is pre-funded. I mean, they, would they, can you actually swap to Cash Shield? Uh, no, if you, are, if you are on Shield. Oh, sorry. Elder, Elder Shield, Shield. Shield, you have already pre-funded. Yeah. Yes. When you move to Care Shield, they will ask you to pay an extra premium. Yes. Oh. Uh, okay. And I Catch think up. the extra premium is probably worth paying. I think, we, do, we haven't seen the figure, it should be worth paying. Right? Uh, I also agree with your point about working on the parameter. Uh, and that's why my approach is a total return. Uh, total return. Uh, okay, I think uh, uh, maybe I'll let other people have their questions. Any others? If it's none, I'd like to pass back and uh, fall on the street. <laughs>